So the customer's currently got this tall column rad here. Now, they're just struggling for heat inside this room, so the bottom of the rad is probably gonna be around that sort of height. I'll measure it in a moment and get it just right. As I said, that's either gonna be boxed in or covered up, so that's not a problem at all. I don't confess to be one of them people that does the soldering and gets it so you can't see any solder. I personally like to see a little bit of solder run around so you know it's gone. First thoughts are, great, you've got the hot water tank there, so the heating tank's gonna be behind it. Oh no, it's just here. Just that moment you uh, see another fellow YouTuber. And for some reason in the back of my head, I think it's gonna be a bit of a pain. I don't know why, but just something, you know, you get a feel for a job. So another little trick, I think I've showed you before about just crimping or pinching the end of an elbow or a fitting to save that pipe moving around. There's also this little gem as well that you can use. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all doing well. It is currently Thursday morning for me and it looks like it's going to snow. The weather forecast said it was going to snow. I'm currently driving down some real back lanes. To be honest, my camera is going all over the place. So I'm going to pull over because it's going to probably look crap on film. So, sorry about that. Let's try again. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going over to a customer of mine that I've done work for for years and years and years. He's sort of outside the area I usually work. I, I tend to work pretty close to home. The most I travel, which not by choice, just because that's where all my work is, is probably 15, 20 minutes or something like that. I'm quite blessed that way that a lot of my work is local. Whereas this one is about 45, 50 minutes away. But again, he's a customer I've had for years, so I don't mind traveling out to do it. He wants a radiator changing. He's basically got inside his lap, where his lounge is, just got a column radiator in there. And as we all know, these column radiators don't really convect much heat. They just push heat out the front. And you walk into the room, one area is dead warm, the rest of the room's cold. So I've just picked up a 1200 by 600 double, no, tell a lie, 1400 by 600 double that we're gonna fit in next to where he's got his current rad. I don't know if we're gonna remove the original rad or whether he wants to keep it or what, but we'll have a look and um, just do that. We'll bung the system because it'll be a lot easier to do that. So he's getting any airlocks and that sort of stuff. And it's just started to snow. So they were right. Right, let's get over there and get this done. Today's little job is um, a radiator. We're fitting a radiator into this house. I'll take you in now and show you. Um, it's going to run alongside what they've currently got. So I will take you in and show you exactly what we're at. So the customer's currently got this tall column rad here. Now they're just struggling for heat inside this room. So what we're going to do is fit this 1400 by 600 along this wall here. Now, we've just had a little chat whether we were gonna remove this rad, but what we've noticed is behind the wall, it's not great, they've decorated it, but I think if we move it, we're gonna, or remove it completely, we're gonna have decorating problems and this, that, well, not problems, but they're gonna to have to redecorate behind that rad. So we've decided to fit this rad on here, keep this one, because this room does get cold quite quite badly. So we're gonna mount this rad on here, come off this pipe work here, just gonna drop down off a tee, drop down off another tee, run along the skirting to feed that rad. There's gonna be a fair amount of pipe work here, but I've sort of said to them, you know, it's without chopping it all out and disrupting, chopping the walls and chopping around here, it's gonna be a major job. So. We're going to come off there and what they're going to do at a later day is either box it in or to be fair the sofa pushes right up against it anyway so they're happy for the pipe work to be on show there as you know make it as neat as it can do so we're going to come off there with the tee off there with the tee run it parallel run it along there nice and neat and then pipe this rad up so what we've got on this system is it's gravity fed so we're going to go up into the roof bung the tanks i'll show you how i'm going to do that i've got a little bung kit somewhere with me. We'll bung the tanks, it saves draining everything down. Get this rad on, get the pipe work round to this point so the two tails are just coming directly underneath. When we're at that point, we'll then cut the pipe work and connect in. So the customer wants the rad between this point here and not the wall edge, but the edge of the cupboard. So we've worked out the center of this wall 
on the centre of the rad. We've just put a little mark on there. We've got the mark there for the rad bracket. So what we'll do, lean it back now and then just put a little mark there, a little mark there and then we can work out the height. What I'm going to do is I'm going to allow for two pipes to run along there. So the bottom of the rad is probably going to be around that sort of height. I'll measure it in a moment and get it just right. And then we can work the bracket out off that. So then just to get the height of the rad bracket, I always measure from the floor to the bottom of the bracket there, which on this one is 520. Plus our 80 mil we're going to allow for the pipe. So we're 600 to where the top of the bracket's going to go. So we'll level that through, level that across get that marked up, get the brackets on the wall and get the rad hung. And then we can work from the rad, as I said, back to this position. That's the rad hung on the wall now, what I'll do now is take the plugs out, get the vents in, get the thermostatic valve put on, get the lock shield put on, then start running some pipe work, obviously just a single pipe from that side, and then when we come to here, two copper pipes, hopefully, I think, we're going to just miss that one, if need be, I'm going to kick them down, um, just to clear that little elbow and fit in there. But as I said, that's either going to be boxed in or covered up, so that's not a problem at all. So what I'm going to do is put the lock shield valve this side, because I don't want the thermostatic valve being interfered with the heat from this rad and vice versa. So what I may do is get them to leave this fully open so this rad can cut in and out, because it's mainly this one they want for the heat. So we'll put the thermostatic valve down there, because this was more of a case of leaving it in due to the decorating that would need doing behind. So we've got the clips now underneath the rad over to this one and we're going to put a T on, a little drain off on, elbow straight into that thermostatic valve and then this side we're going to come off, clip there and I think what I'm going to do is take this one across, cut the section out here, put a T in there onto that and then I think what we're going to do with here is come along and see if I can sweat this off the edge of here put a T in straight into this valve and then in to pick up this bit of pipe work here. But we'll get this made up, get this soldered up and then we can work predominantly in this area, get the pipe work ready and as I said then get it drained down. So a lot of people have picked up that when I do making end feed fittings up I put the solder into the flux and then just rub it into the fitting. I don't think I've ever used a flux brush. Um, it's just how I was taught by the guy that I did my apprenticeship with. He used to do it like that so you just follow suit, don't you, and do it like that yourself. So, yeah, that's how I've always done it. Right, we get a bit of paste in here, paste it onto the pipe there, and uh, get it made into the valve and get it soldered up. So I'm sure some people will comment that I've not used a burn mat on that. If you know how heat displacement works through copper pipes, you'll know that you can just basically heat this area up here and the heat will also go into the other fittings. And the capillary action of the solder will pull itself into the joints. And I don't, I don't confess to be a, uh, one of them people that does the soldering and gets it so you can't see any solder. I personally, like to see a little bit of solder run round so you know it's gone. You know, it's not not for all everyone, but that's how I like to do it. And what we'll do afterwards, we'll wipe this down, big wipes on that, we'll clean that up, and it'll look like new again. So that's that valve connected and the pipe work run down. So we're now concentrating in this area. And what I'm gonna do is just solder this pipe in place here. But another little trick, I think I've showed you before about just crimping or pinching the end of an elbow or a fitting to save that pipe moving around. There's also this little gem as well that you can use. Just set your tape measure up, hold the pipe up, get it level, 
and then you can just solder that into the corner. So we'll get this bit soldered up and then what I can do when we're ready to do it, drain the system down, just cut this here. What I'm going to do is get rid of that copper as well. Cut that straight to a T here for this side. Get this one made up along here and I think I'm going to come up and as I said straight into there and repipe that. That's the pipe working now. The bottom one round, we're going to, as I say, we're going to come off there and into there and then the top one, we're going to do that. But what I'm going to do now is take the tank bungs, because this is a gravity fed system, I'm going to take these two tank bungs, you can get these from Screw Fix if you just put in, I'm not sure what it's called, system drain down kit, I think they're known as. But I'll go upstairs, show you how these work inside the tank and what we'll do, bung the tank and we can do one at a time. So once it's bunged, pop the hose on to there, get this drain down, get the system, just sort of what water's in it taken out and then and then we can just cut a T into here connect this one up and then switch over and do that one so i'll take you up and show you how these work it's always nice when a customer has a proper set of loft ladders in and a nice light up in the roof so you know that you're safe up here look it's all carpeted as well best wipe my feet before i come up here first thoughts are Great, you've got the hot water tank there, so the heating tank's gonna be behind it. Oh no, it's just here. So, we'll just move the lid, if I can. And it's not the nicest of jobs. I'm trying to see where the feed is. And get over here. Yeah, there it is. So, the first bung will go into the vent. To be fair, this is just a 15 mil vent, so what I'm gonna use is just a push fit cap which will save if it's a 22 mil vent then bungs will sit properly secure inside there but for this tank but for this tank i'll just use that vent and then the other one i say i've got two of them anyway but the other one just goes in if you can see it into the feed i don't know if you can make that out goes into the feed now sometimes be careful because sometimes these feeds have little knobbly bits where you can't get it to seal but that one's gone perfectly in. So now, when we open the drain off, it will just cause a vacuum within the system. It's like when you uh, put a straw inside a cup, hold the top, lift it up, the water will stay inside the straw. So that basically holds the water inside the system, drain out what we need to do downstairs, get the tea on, get it soldered in position, and then we can switch over and do the other side because you don't want the two ends open. I have done it before with two ends open and it's worked fine or I've just been lucky, but this one we'll cut one, solder it up, and then do the other one. So we're ready now to drain this down. The bungs are in the tank. What I'm gonna do is open up this here, and I'm gonna do it slightly different to how I thought I was gonna do it. I am just going to come along and connect into there. So in theory, what I should have done is put a longer bit of pipe in here. So what I might do is sweat that out, put a longer bit of pipe into here and then just come straight off there, straight into an elbow. We can do away with this drain off because we've got a drain off down that end. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Sweat that out, replace that pipe and then just come straight into it like that. So there we go, I've just sweated that out. To be fair, I should have shown you how I did that, but I can show you on this drain off how to do it. So I just sweated that out, put a longer bit in and now when we sweat this drain off out, we can just put an elbow in and then straight into this T here. So I've gone back and forth the way I was gonna pipe that up. Remember, we've got a drain off down there. So because I've removed the drain off, off of here, it's not gonna be an issue. I'll cut that out, I'll put a coupler in there. It's all gonna be painted, so it's not gonna to look too bad, but <laughs> the way that the water, there was just a tiny little bit of water just seeping through, so that was the way I had to do that. Um, I know some of you are gonna go, oh, this is where press fit would have been perfect. Yes, it would have been perfect, but I personally don't like the size of the press fit joints. Um, so this just works better for me. It's not a problem, we've got it done now. We've got this side connected. So what we'll do now, we'll undo this, we'll unsweat this off here, come off, tee up into there, and then drop down into that one. What I've done, I've cut this out of here, cut this off, clean this off. Now we're gonna have to come down, tee into this, and then drop down and connect into that. It's slightly different to how I was gonna do it, but sometimes just on the fly you've got to alter things and look at the way 
things can be done. It's not going to look great, you know, visually down here with all the pipe work, but as I said, they're going to paint it. It's going to be covered up and they'll probably box it in anyway. So it is what it is, but I'm just letting the last little dregs of water drip out there. I've got the Aquavac, so I'll get the Aquavac on that, suck that out, and then alter that. I may even, again, I'm not 100% sure. There's obviously a million and one ways of doing it, so I may come off like that, or I'm not going to have enough room to put it there. It just means putting a coupler on there. Oh, I guess I could do it. Yeah, in fact, I think, looking at it, I'm going to come up, put a little set in that, and then across and into there. Might change by the time I've done it, but either or, we'll get that bit done. So we finally got the pipe working now for this rad. It doesn't, it's one of those, as I've said a couple of times, we're gonna box it in. So it is what it is here. It's feeding this rad. It's the best way that we could do it. I altered it a little bit here differently to how I was gonna do it. And just getting this bit here sorted was a bit of a pig actually. I had to um, sweat this out, get a fit in on there. The only way to get that in because a set was too tight it wouldn't fit in there straight so that's the only way of doing that but as i've said the customer knows that it's not going to look great but they're going to paint it all so it's all the same color put the sofa in it or box it in or whatever they're going to do um just to cover it up so that's all in connected we'll go up now pull the bung out the tank and then that will release the system back in hopefully no airlocks shouldn't be airlocks that's a good thing we're using those bungs it stops the system air locking up touch wood Hopefully, it's not. I've probably jinxed myself now. We're going to get airlocks, but we're going to whip the bungs out, get these filled back up, get the heating back on, and get this one tested. So, hopefully, the tank should still be full of water. Yeah, it is. So, what this is going to do then is stop the tank dragging any air in because usually when you drain the system down completely it sucks all the water out the head of tank and can pull air in so doing it this way will stop any airlocks occurring so pop that one off pop the bung out it will pull a little bit in but always check that the ball valves are working and shutting off we just get the air out of here now valves open trv's open this one's full so we just pull the rest of the air out of the system here and then flick it on and uh, get some heat into this. There we have it. Rad's all in, piped up, getting nice and hot now. You can literally feel the heat convecting out the top of there. Now the initial reason for this rad going in, the customer found that this room was pretty cold because they only had, obviously, this panel rad. And we all know these panel rads just, or column rads, they just push heat out the front. They look nice, but they're not great if you want to heat a room up. Whereas now with that double panel convector rad, we know the heat is just going to convect all the way around the room. You can feel it literally here. You can feel the heat from that already. So customer is going to be chuffed to bits with that. But as I said, all along with this pipe work down here, it's not my finest hour, but it's how it had to be. The customer is aware of it. I told them before even doing it, this is how it would have to be done. And they were happy enough with it. As I said, from the off, they're gonna box it in, or at least the sofa. I mean, the sofa comes to sort of here anyway. So that's not a problem. But yeah, customer's happy, room's getting hot, and that's all that matters. So that's that little job done. Trev is chuffed to bits, now that room. He's basically got two lounges in his house. His missus sits in one room, and when he wants to watch the football and whatnot, he sits in that room where he just put that rad in. And he just said, sometimes when he's in there, it's just too cold. He walked into the room and said straight away, it's just so much warmer because the heat is being convected around. Right, as I said at the start of this video, I'm about 45, 50 minutes away from where I live and where I usually work, which has took me into the area of, uh, on the cusp of Daventry, Northampton, which is where Luke Clayton of Clayton Plumbing and Eating, if you don't follow Luke's channel, I will bang a link below get onto Luke's channel. It's the same sort of thing, real world plumbing, just showing his days um, 
doing what he does and you know in his local area bathrooms etc etc very similar to mine but yeah we'll go over catch up with luke have a little chat with him and um, as i said i'll put luke's details to his channel go and give him a follow again another great plumbing channel there's plenty out there so um you got to pick your bunch really but yeah get onto luke's channel we'll go over now i'll introduce you to him if you're not if you don't know him um, if you do great you know what he's all about if not i'll go and show you here he is look looking busy yeah just that moment you uh see another fellow youtuber yeah. things yeah he did good man always check out see how busy he is checking the skip baths out toilets out skipology you need to stack a skip properly yeah. i work for a, a, a carpenter and he always says you got to put everything down the side and then down this side and do this and do this yeah i, I got a skip it uh, my house the other day and then it was all like plasterboard all yeah because when it's at your house and you're paying for it you want to get as much stuff in as you can exactly. i'm just thinking now thinking That's what i've got in my van that i can chuck into luke's skip so it's friday morning and i've had one of these customers i don't know her she's just rung me randomly and asked me if i could go and change a set of bath taps for her niece uh quite local to me and I messaged you back and said, yeah, all right, let me have a look at my diary, see when I can get there. And then the following day, messaged me, have you looked in your diary? When can you go and do it? I said, sorry, completely forgot. I'll have a look tonight. Got back to her and I said, the earliest I could do it would be sort of three weeks time. Oh, oh, I thought you'd be able to do it sooner than that. Can you not do it sooner? No, then she rings me. And I'm like, oh. so we've all been there, just ignored it. Following day, literally quarter past eight in the morning, she's ringing me. And I didn't clock the number, answered it. Oh, is there any chance you'd go sooner? I thought you'd be able to do it sooner. I went, sorry, I've, I've, I've got stuff to do. Anyway, I messaged you last night. I had a few little jobs to do today, Friday morning. I said, right, I'll, I'll swing over and do it. Yeah, we're supplying the taps, right, okay. So they're supplying the taps for it. So I'm gonna pop over there now, get this one done. Sometimes you have one of them jobs that you just wanna get out of the way. And for some reason in the back of my head, I think it's gonna be a bit of a pain. I don't know why, but just something you know you get a feel for a job so we'll go over there now and just get this one done and dusted and out of the way and then what i'm going to do is pop to the barn because um we filled it up last week and the guy has been the renewables company have been in and commissioned the the uh the ground source pump and the cylinder and all that sort of stuff so i'm told the heat is on over there so we'll shoot over there hopefully if we get a chance and have a look at that right friday morning a little tap change job these are coming out and that's going in. So we're going to get this panel off, see what the taps look like underneath there, and hopefully get them swapped out with not too much trouble. But these panels are dead flimsy, so nine times out of ten they break getting them out. But we'll have a look, get them out, get that swapped over. Hopefully, for a Friday morning, it's going to be fairly straightforward. Touch wood. So, as we can see, it's got hep 2 couplers or it's got hep 2 swivels on we've got a shut off valve there and a shut off valve there so i'm going to shut these two off and just literally swap it swap the tap out i've just been asked to swap the tap out so i'm not going to get too deep into all this little lot right let's get it disconnected so there we go the taps are out we've whipped them out i always if easy enough to do is whip the overflow as well and just bend it out your way gives you a lot more access up to the bottom of the bath so we'll get this one into position now and then get it reconnected back up so the NERAD Tapex kit comes out again I keep getting impressed the more I use it the more I'm impressed with this so this should reach back up we'll do this one first There we go, that's them fitted back in. I'll turn the feeds on now, just to make sure. Turn them off first. Turn the feeds on. Just make sure we're all okay. There we go. I'll dry it all down, test it, and then get the, uh, 
Get the overflow back in. There we go. Perfect. That is what you call a little bread and butter job. In, shut the water off. Luckily, then two isolation valves were there. It wasn't as bad as what I thought it was going to be. Whip it out, whip the new one in, get it tested, get the panel back on. Luckily, that panel didn't fall apart. I thought it was going to get that back on and done. So what we'll do now is I'm going to shoot over the barn and just swing in, make sure everything's all right heat-wise. It'd be nice to feel a little bit of heat. It's been on uh, two days, I think. And what, what they usually say is, for every 20 mil of screed, it takes a day for the heat to come through. So it'd be interesting to see if we've got heat downstairs. Upstairs we should have because it's the snug overboard system straight onto carpet. So I'm hoping there's heat there. I'll take the um, thermal imaging camera and we'll have a bit of a look around. I've just pulled up at the barn, as you can see. We'll go in and see exactly what's going on, heating wise. Hi oh, boys. How are we doing? Which door can we use? Is it warm in there? You've been in yet? Yeah, I've been in Is it? You coming through? No. Oh. Yeah. Right, here we go. Let's have a look and see what's occurring. So we've got heat through the coil into the cylinder. Let's top the pressure up a little bit because it will have found a little bit of air on the way out. So let's get that up, back up to one and a half. Because what you've got on here, you've got so you've got well, four automatic air vents there, automatic air vent at the top of the, the low loss header. Um, as I said, I didn't do this, the renewables company did this. I've never fitted one of these before, so I don't really know the ins and outs of it. All I know is we've got a low loss header there. This is the ground source heat pump, works round, and then it comes off in here from. Uh, the feeds that go out into this field, back there into the low loss header, then you've got obviously all your flows come out the top of the low loss header. From what I know, I've never fitted one, but from what I know is, that's your flow going in, that's your return coming out, and it just sits, the whole system just sits in there. So the top is obviously red hot, that takes the flow away round to your heated manifolds, and then it comes back in your return cooler there out there it's something to do with differentials on it i'm not 100 percent sure um i missed the guy coming to commission it i wanted to sort of go through it with him and and find out what's what but we'll go around now and just see what's been going on i think yeah the stairs are in how cool do they look it's a smart bit of kit isn't it the stairs are in are they all in done now it's got the spindles to go on how cold is that? Look, I remember when we first brought you in here, all that was just completely vaulted. But no, they look cool. So they're going to have spindles around the side. And I think, I think he's having glass along there. I'm not 100% sure, but spindles are. Ah, we've just been told reliably before there's spindles going along there as well. But that's going to look mega when it's done. Uh, right, let's go check these manifolds then. We should. Yeah, there's a little bit of heat. Very very low heat temperature through it. I don't think we're gonna have heat into the floors yet. We'll have a look. I will get my thermal imaging camera and we'll have a look, but I assume the top floor will have, or if there's any heat through it, we'll be able to see that a lot more coming through. Let's go up and just see if we can feel it at all. What I do know is we have got hot water. At all the points. And they're all on the left hand side as well, which is always good. It's all right filling systems up, but until the hot water actually comes through the, uh, the right side, there's always that little, little worry. If you can see that. You can see steam rising off it. I'm sure you all believe me anyway. But we've got a pot of water there, so that's beginning to come together. So this bathroom is near enough done now. We are 99% done. I've got two little things to do. The utility downstairs, we'll have a unit in and a basin in, and that's basically it. So I don't really want to show you too much until 
everything is done and then I will be bringing you back for a good look round. Everyone said it's not going to allow you to film the whole barn when it's completely done. Look, we've got underfloor heating up here. I don't think it's coming through yet. And then let's have a quick look. Yeah, we've got manifold here. I think it'll take a while to come through. I don't think the heat, it must have, it does take a good few days for it to come through, to be fair, because you've got to get, I think it's a kilometre of ground source pipe work that is right out inside them fields. So as I say, the ground source goes out there. As you can see, all through that field at the top there is all the pipe work, and then obviously it comes back into the building to feed the plant room in there and the manifolds in there. But you can feel a little bit of warmth coming into the building, to be fair. So I have got all the screens on. I don't know if I showed you these. I don't think I did. I think I did the how-to video on the screens and then carried on fitting the other two screens. So we've got that screen there. Perfect to just walk in. That looks nice. Really nice bathroom. This is bathroom cloakroom. And it's got... Ow, this is real texture. I don't think you can see it. This is real nice textured bit of wood to go on there. So that's that. Um, I'll show you these snug stats. Because these snug stats also tell you humidity, I think. So the floor is set for 24 degrees. It's not going to hit that because the boiler's slowly coming up. But yeah, temperature, humidity in the room. Um, and with these snug stats, you can go through everything are really easy to work so after a good look round, it would seem that the heat hasn't got into the building yet it went on scott told me what day we're on to friday it went on late wednesday so i think by the time we get over this weekend it's on constantly 24 hours a day seven days a week don't forget we've got huge amounts of screed under here and as i said all the pipe work for the ground source was right down in them fields so i don't really know how it works but all i know is the heat hasn't got into the building yet but it is doing its thing because the heat is in the hot water we'll maybe swing back next week to middle of next week and i'll uh, let you know how it's going then right before i shoot off um i'll just let you know i'm looking at possibly getting another van or another maybe a company car for the business but as you all know it's got to be orange and black they're my colors so i'm not sure i've got the van parts up here I'm not sure whether to go for this orange and black or this orange and black or maybe that orange and black over there or maybe this one over here or maybe this one here but no this was an opportunity too good to miss 